Welcome to another Q&A. This one comes from Freddie Salazar in California, and he was asking me, like, what is the, the micron rating on a carbon filter, right? So in order to answer that, we'll go back to the beginning and say, what are the filters looking to do? What do we want? We want spot-free water. How do we get spot-free water? We use DI as the final filter, and DI doesn't really need any pre-filters at all. So that's why we normally just have dual DI tanks. Sometimes you'll see guys put pre-filters on them, but there's no functional advantage in 99.5% of the cases, right, when you're using them. There's just no advantage of those, except it becomes another consumable. So it increases your costs. When we do want filters is when we've got reverse osmosis. So we want to have a sediment and a carbon function before we have a reverse osmosis membrane. The reason we need to do that is because the material that a reverse osmosis membrane is made from is vulnerable to chlorine. Chlorine will um, attack the, the, the membrane material and where that's critical is that basically that membrane material has got tiny, tiny little holes that will let water molecules through, but it won't let um, clustered um, mineral compounds, mineral compounds have got an ionic charge and around that, uh, around that compound with the ionic charge, other water molecules are being softly drawn to it. They're not attached to it, but they're being drawn to, the, to it. So then they create a cluster and it's that cluster that can't get through the membrane. If the holes get bigger because the chlorine eats away at the holes, then more minerals will go through, then your TDS out of your reverse osmosis membrane will go up because it's been damaged by the chlorine, and then your DI cost will go up because your, your TDS out of the reverse osmosis becomes the TDS in for the DI, and the DI has to remove more minerals. How do I know when I should change my carbon? Well, I feel pretty strongly that if you change the carbon filter, these 10 inch filters, if you just change them on the first of the month, every month, during the months that you clean windows, that would be sufficient. It's better to, clean, to change them more often than, than not often enough. So nobody knows how much water each person's using, what the flow rate is, how many hours they work each day, how many days they worked each month. You know, so it's just better to set it up as a regime. You know? And also even the, the sediment filter is also something you should... Same, same. Yeah. Well, this, we can cover the sediment filter, like how we deal with the sediment filter. So the first defense is your sediment filter. So a sediment filter, if you go back 10 years, you'd be able to buy a 20 micron sediment filter. Now you can buy one micron sediment filter. So a 20 micron, you might imagine it's a weave like that and anything coming you know, smaller than that will get through. And you know, five micron will be like that and anything smaller than that will get through. One micron will be like that and anything smaller than that will get through. And so basically they are catching debris, rust in the water. Like even if you've got rusty water, it'll catch the rust particles, you know, even if you can't see them. So, um, and also organics, it'll ca catch that. Like weird stuff that's in water that we can't see, but it's there, right? It will get caught in a sediment filter. The, the problem for window cleaning is that the, the, the more, the lower the micron rating on a sediment filter, the, the, the more it restricts the flow. Now, in the old days where you've got two or four pencil jets, that's no big deal, right? Because you don't actually need much flow. But, but when we go to radial brushes and we want two liters a minute or half a gallon a minute of flow rate, then everything adds up to what's your flow rate. And of course, your reverse osmosis system, it's also um, reducing the flow rate available from the tap because it goes through the filter and half the water goes to waste and half the water comes out as permeate or pure water. It makes sense. The so, tighter the tighter the, 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 the water is like struggling to get through. Struggling to get through. And then it gets worse than that, right? So this is a brand new, you know, virgin white sediment filter. Well, as you see this start to discolor, it discolors from the outside in, right? As you see it start to discolor, you, to identify that, that these little grids are there's something in this one, right? So, it, so now water won't go through there, it's clogging. So the longer you use one of these, the more it clogs, the more it clogs, the less the flow rate through the sediment filter. So when somebody has a bad flow rate, the first thing we say is, when did you change your sediment filter? Because you may not, it might have nothing to do with the RO, the, the RO is not even getting water because your sediment filter is full. So maybe and, the, it's working, but it's 
interfering with the flow rate so much that like exactly like, yeah exactly okay. okay right so so the function the function of changing the sediment filter is critical as you see it discolor the more you see it discolor and the darker this discoloration the more it's clogged, the lower your flow rate will be through your system. Not because of your reverse osmosis, not because of temperature, not because of back pressure, but just because this is ready for a change, right? So you want to try and keep these, you know, white, beige, you know, something like that, not dark brown, right? Sometimes you pull these out and you go, oh my God, like it's all, they're, they're so solid in color, right? So they're really restricting the flow rate. Set the monthly alarm on your phone so that you don't miss yeah. that. Change it on the first of the month every month and away you go. They're, they're like six bucks each. Maybe you can, it doesn't really matter which one you buy, but buy the one with the highest rating you can. Like we use 10 micron. That's the highest one we can buy now. We can't buy 20 anymore. If we could buy 20, we'd be putting 20 in because we don't really need to catch that much stuff, right? We don't have to catch it that small. So, so, so that's the sediment function. Then we want to go to carbon because carbon will take out um, biomaterial, um, organic material, and it'll take out chlorine and fluorine and maybe you know chlorine compounds, right? With the way we purify, um, keep the water pot potable, like drinkable, then we'll use um, chemicals in the water to keep it from from bacteria growing and viruses and all that sort of thing. So. So the, the carbon filter will do that. Well, we have two kinds of carbon filter. This type, when you see this mesh around it, this is a block carbon. What's weird is that you'll see that this block carbon has a mesh and usually it'll have a micron rating, almost always. So why does it have a micron rating if it's a carbon? Right? Because the sediment should take out the micron stuff and the carbon's job is to take out the chlorine. And the answer is when you get a block carbon, it's got a sediment filter around the outside of it, right? So it's a five micron sediment filter around a block carbon. And a block carbon is basically activated carbon that is um, glued together into a block. And then you put the sediment filter around the outside of it to hold it together and make it look pretty and stop it from being dusty and all sorts of things. The problem with these, we use these in Flow Blue. So, and, and I want to make sure that nobody takes this like, you know, it's so important. It's not so important, but as you go to tweak a system to make it as um, functional as possible, then you can work between these two to get the best result. So, the 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 real issue with this is that. The sediment filter and the surface area of sediment filter is the is the the outside of the filter. So the, you put this into a housing, the water comes up with the housing and it goes through the filter this way. It's sealed in the top and the bottom. It goes through the the filter from the sides, and then the pure water goes down um, the bottom into your reverse osmosis membranes. Right, so. So your sediment filter capability is only the outside. Now, if you have one of these in front of one of these, it's not so relevant, right? Doesn't matter. But you do see some, a lot of the pure water systems in the market don't have two filters. They only have one filter. And it's a five micron or a one micron carbon filter. Now, now that you understand that a sediment filter will clog quickly and you look at how much filter there is in this, it clogs from the outside in, Right, doesn't fully clog, right? But with these system systems here, the, the sediment function is just the outside layer. So that will clog many times faster than that will clog and start to affect your flow rate. And because the carbon is glued together, the water's got to find its way through the porous carbon in order to, to get to the center and go into your flow. Okay. So if you get a carbon filter like this one. What's in here, it's got a bit of water in it, came straight out of the factory. Um, what's in here is granulated carbon, right? So they're granules of coconut, you know, burnt coconut, what do they call it? Husks, you know, the shell, I coconut don't know. shell. Yeah, 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 <laughs> stuff like that. All right. Anyway, so they, they, they basically turn it into, into charcoal, some sort of, you know, living matter usually, you know, that's waste product, and then they bash it and turn it into little crumbs, and then they run it through some water to get rid of most of the dust. There's a little dust filter in the bottom of these. 
so that you, you stop the, the dust from getting into the system. And so the water basically, in this sense, the water comes up from the outside. This is solid, doesn't go through the sides. And it comes up and then it goes through the top, right, into the top and, um, and then out, out the bottom. So it's coming up from the outside, into the top, out the bottom, and into your, into your reverse osmosis membrane. So the beauty of that, as you can hear, there's no restriction resistance at all from using these. So it doesn't affect your flow rate at all. Ah, interesting. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, the sediments it will, but the carbon, no. Yeah, this one will, so if you have this and this together, it doesn't matter if you have this and this together, this is going to do the same job as that, but from a flow rate per point of view, this would clog faster if you didn't have this. This and this is fine together, and we use that in Flow Blue. We use these in Flow Blue because of the dust stuff and all sorts of things. So, but you can use these, um, and we prefer these in the Flow Red, right? And it's just to understand the differences because then everybody can make their own decisions. Granul this is granulated, this is block, that's sediment, yeah? And then, because all we're looking to do, all we do is make water to clean windows with, right? We're not running laboratories and we're not trying to, you know, make make water for, you know, mixing chemicals or hospital water or anything like that. We're just washing windows. So, so the the secret is to use the, you know, the the system that works best for you. And as we've gravitated towards using higher flow rates in our systems, then anything which restricts flow rate, we try to not use. Okay. So we would prefer to use this over this, and we would always use this and this or this and this. Right, a sediment and a carbon in any form, because the function of the sediment is it is even though it will clog, a carbon filter, a block carbon filter will clog faster and affect your flow rate more. Now, if you're using pencil jets, no big deal, not going to make any difference at all because you don't use any flow rate, right, per se, right, compared to what we use with radial brush. All right, how does that sound? There's a bit of a ramble, but I but, learned something. Um, yeah. There's always something to learn, yeah, isn't there? I learned something from my, you know me. I'm doing yeah, you got aquariums. I have my, uh, my reverse osmosis system in my home. Yeah. So now I know that I should change my carbon more often. Yes. And also sediment filter more regularly. Yeah, your carbon is critical. Yeah, for the carbon chlorine. For yeah. the chlorine, yeah. At, at least at home. And you don't have the same flow rate as a window cleaner. A window cleaner is using half a gallon a minute. You know, that's 120 gallons an Oh, if you hour. saw my flow rate at home, you would laugh. It's really? so low. Right, but, uh, yeah. it's, it's just, just dripping along, It's right? just for creating zero TDS water. Yeah. Then I add my yeah. own minerals. Then you add yeah. the minerals for yeah. the type of fish that you've yeah. got. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 So Same thing, but different, right? Yeah, mm. that's it. All right. All right, so that's it. So that gives you the information that you might need to apply in your business as you make your buying decisions, okay?